The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And here we are for Mick Shots. We're a little personnel challenge today. No Bill Jones. So you're going to have to put up with Everson Wells and Mickey Spagnola here in the SWBC podcast studio at the Star for another edition of Mick Shots on a Tuesday. And it's a weird Tuesday because we haven't finished yet, completed week. 15 in the league, is yes, that right? Yes, that is correct. Because we have 16, 17, and 18 to go. Uh, two games tonight, uh, and the big one that we'll all be keeping our eyes on is Philadelphia and Washington. Uh, and we're going to see if they tie, which would clinch <laughs> the NFC you guys East. You with this tie. You know what? If we get a tie, that would be too much. I would have to bow down to you guys and say I am not worthy because you and Bill were talking about that yesterday. So now with two games played last night, now there's been 210 games played so far this season and there's been one tie. One tie. Well, you know, we've had a, a few unusual moments. Uh, what was the score? 14-11? Halftime score, right? Yeah. That was the first in the history of the NFL. I think they had another scoring uh, anomaly right. um, last week. Or was it two weeks ago? They had another one, and they were saying that that's the first time. Well, how about, how about Sunday 9 to nothing? How many 9 to nothing games have we seen? <laughs> not many, but I've seen them. But so who many. knows, right? Because if Philly and Washington tie, the Cowboys clinch the NFC East. That's not what we're going to base this, this, and, this segment on. <laughs> and, if, and if they don't, then the Cowboys just need to win need one to more game. just keep winning. That's just right. keep winning and not worry about uh, what anybody else is doing, because normally when you look at those things, nobody does you a favor, right? And it's so fun. Yeah, you talk about no favors. What you see now is uh, the Cowboys are, at this point, number two in the NFC, uh, period. Right. And all of those naysayers out there, they can't come up with any, anything else. So they talk about the offense, and they talk about uh, McCarthy's uh, lack of coaching, right. lack of good coaching. So now they go through his his entire season of mistakes that uh, he's committed, including uh, the end of the first half of the of the game this weekend. So yeah, yeah which yeah. wasn't they a mistake. Nothing, they got nothing else to do. It was a conscious decision on saying, you know what, let's just make sure we get a field goal mm-hmm. here and not uh, worry about uh, trying to get greedy and score a touchdown. So as I was going to say, the NFL. Uh, takes care of those who takes care of themselves. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. And so don't worry about anybody else helping you out. Just worry about what you need to do. And the Cowboys uh, day off today for the players, and they'll jump back into practice tomorrow. It'll be a virtual uh, week uh, for the rest of the league, including the Cowboys. So meetings, um, guys will be at home. They'll jump in the car, get here for practice, and then, when it's over, head out and go back. And if there's meetings after practice, they'll be virtual once again. And uh, just listening to the <laughs> coordinators yesterday asking about the virtual presentation, uh, they all say, and Mike said it too, that we learned more about doing that from last year. Yes. Uh, and I think, you know, the key thing is when you're a teacher, uh, you got to do whatever you can do to keep guys uh, or students attention, right? Yeah. You can't just get up there and lecture for 45 minutes, right? You better throw something else in there. Uh, and John Fossil was talking about how, you know, they would give him a break. So, or maybe it was Kellen Moore. I uh-huh. can't remember which, but it was like, okay, we'll do something for 15, 20 minutes and then take a five minute break, let guys get up, stretch or whatever. Because if you're actually watching, like it, whatever virtual uh, component they use, 
you can look in people's eyes and tell them, okay, they're not listening to me, <laughs> right? I don't know if you've ever gone like and spoke at a class or, you know, whatever level, grade school, junior high, high school, you get up there and you're talking and then you're starting to look around and it's like, Oh, there's a lot of blank eyes. I get that all the time. (laughs) Yeah, I get that all the time. It's no big deal. And you got to do something to shake it up. You got to shake it up, right? Uh, You got to tell jokes or something. I don't know how teachers do it, right? You know, and I was talking to one during last year, and it was first grade. And how oh, that's the worst. She could see (laughs) she could see all the faces, right? And then she could tell. Okay, I got a problem. And it's like, yeah. well, what was your problem? She goes, well, kids were starting to fall asleep. Like they put their head down, and there's no there's parent no there. Distraction. There's no parent yes. there to shake them up. Oh, there's she, no no kid across from here. There's no kid next to you, behind you that yeah. that can you know keep your interest. It's going. just a face. It's just a computer, <laughs> and it's nothing that excites you. It's not a cartoon. It's a person talking, and you are so bored. Right. So that's why the degrees suffered. Yeah. For all the kids. Oh, sure. Are doing that whole time. Absolutely. So anyway, they were talking about how they have to you know not just get through the meetings, but come up with ways ways to keep the guy's uh, attention. And I don't know if that's singing a song or doing a dance. Well, I was going to say, what did he say? Yeah. It, 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 what did he come up yeah, with? Yeah, no one asked that question. <laughs> it was like, okay, that should have been the next well, question. Well, no, like, everybody must have been uh, zoned out. Yeah, the media was zoned <laughs> out, right? <laughs> you got to look at the eyes, blank faces, right. people going to sleep. Yeah. So anyway, um, from a uh, roster standpoint, the Cowboys did create a, a roster spot. Uh, and they needed to do it because they were going to get two guys, it sounds like, coming up off COVID reserve. Tristan uh, Hill. Tristan Hill and oh, also Odigizu. There you go. Those two guys. And uh, it sounds like from what Stephen Jones said that uh, Donovan Wilson would be coming off of injured reserve. So to create one open spot, they released uh, Azur Kamara. And I think they did it with the intention of signing him back to yes. the practice squad. I uh, read that. As long as he clears waivers. Mm-hmm. So we'll find that out a little bit after our show. Our show, over. of course we will. Of course, right? Because <laughs> they, they ended up releasing Osirius Mitchell uh, from the practice squad. I don't recall him. You don't? No. I, I think a lot of people didn't recall <laughs> yeah, him I thought they. I thought maybe he was on hard. Well, I remember they, they talked about Kamara being on hard knocks. Right. He was I the star. I thought the wide right? receiver also was a part of that, and I don't recall seeing I, yeah, this. Yeah, I don't either. I think he, he might have been a late uh, signing mm-hmm. uh, to the practice Great squad. name, though. No, serious. Great name, bro. Right? <laughs> so anyway, that'll that'll uh, open up room for Donovan Wilson, who's missed the last four games, but just adds to the, the secondary, right, Could you with imagine, the safeties. Man, Once this team didn't hurt. have enough safeties, <laughs> now they almost have, got more than they can and play. Amazing safeties. They're right. not just safeties. These are playmaking safeties. Right, and, and and, you know, and, and a good sign that he's coming back and Hooker looks like he's kind of getting good. back into the, the swing good. of things. Uh, so that's kind of a, 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 a roster update. And then uh, Tyron Smith um, between McCarthy talking on Monday afternoon and then uh, Kellen Moore. Uh, it sounds like they're hopeful. They don't know. They'll find out more tomorrow when they get into practice of he can get back uh, in time uh, to play in this game after missing the last game after aggravating that foot injury that he had. Jerry Jones, uh, by the way, had an interesting comment today on uh, his 105.3 The Fan segment talking about the offensive line when he was asked about Tyron Smith, like, okay, he's missing three, four more games every year. Uh, and hmm. I think Jerry listened to my answer. Because he basically <laughs> said, and I paraphrase, I'll take as much of Tyron Smith as I can uh, going forward. And our main goal then is to make sure we have a credible backup swing tackle. Yes. So it's like they keep refer- inferring in talk radio that it's time for the Cowboys to get rid of Tyron because he can't play the whole season. And it's like, okay, that's fine, but who's going to take his place that's better? And, and, and basically, I'll take 13 games of Tyron Smith <laughs> before I'll take 17 when anybody else you give well, me to put out what there. What they better do is make sure that they monitor his practicing, and I guess right. they're doing that now. Make sure that he's going to be there for not just – I wouldn't necessarily say this stretch. 
Right. I would not I, I would not say that this stretch for Tyron Smith is a priority. I would love to have him there and if we just win that one game and then get it out of the way and then rest him or whatever we could do. I'd love to do that, but I'd love to keep him in rhythm. I want to keep him out there and practice him uh, in spurts. Uh, and even if we have to, in certain games, play him in spurts because I want him to keep that timing. Right. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want that injury to be aggravated. And, and, and I think they can do that in practice. And yeah. I think they've been uh, – my, my understanding is, you know, if, if they – I don't know how many snaps they would get on offense. Say they get, uh, what do you think, 30, 40 snaps during a practice right, on offense. Right, right, So let them have half and, and then work in the other the guys. The backups need right? it anyway. And they need to work yeah. more than he <laughs> does, right. right? And just give him enough to keep him sharp. And then, and then the same thing in the game. You know, just kind of judge how the game's going. Do you need him out there? If you get to a point, you know – Heaven forbid that you have like a three-score lead or something. All right, get them out of there. Yeah, uh, don't wear them out. But uh, so that's the one injury I think they have to, and they're very fortunate because that's the really the only one. What about Washington? Uh, how, how are they doing at quarterback? Because you had the first two were out. Uh, Heineke My understanding, and Adam were out. yeah. The last thing I read was since it's a it's a short trip to Phil, to Philadelphia. Yeah, it's like a half hour plane ride. They can wait to the last minute to see. Okay, did those guys test out? Like, did they test negative mm-hmm. enough times that uh, either one can play? But I think the last time I read, it was being reported that uh, Garrett Gilbert was like the likely yeah. starter. Yeah, just because. He's got that one start in the NFL. <laughs> here. Uh, yes, We're that's here. it. The one start. See, we did him a favor. Right, exactly. Uh, everything comes around. But, you know, so yeah, they about the quarterback, so then we'll have Heineke then. Heineke will, will probably be the quarterback that we face. There's a good chance that so he So he's not injured. Back. Yeah, no, it's, it's covid Related. It's COVID, so I, yeah. I thought I thought it was uh, I thought it was Gallimore related. Yeah, the way he ran over the, the center <laughs> yeah. and the quarterback. So the quarterback was able to get up, and if he would, if, if they had, if Heineke had to play tonight, he could have played other than COVID. I think that's that's right. Because I thought he was injured in that game. He never came back. And you know what? We're going to turn Gallimore into a verb. <laughs> he got Gallimore. He got Gallimore. <laughs> that's it. I, I tweeted, man. That was just an amazing play. You don't see that happen very often, but I. I thought that Heineke was going to be out um, because of injury. Because of that, yeah. yeah. It sounded like he would have a chance if he if he cleared COVID protocol. But um, gosh, we we talked about last week that by the end of the week they had a hundred players uh, testing positive for COVID, going on COVID reserve. They had another thirty-seven on Monday. Okay, so that leads to my next question. So the COVID protocol. Uh, they're supposed to ease up on it in regards to vaccinated and boosted players, correct? Uh, y- yes. Uh, if if um, if you're if you're vaccinated, if you had your booster shot mm-hmm. and you're asymptomatic, I think um, it's like okay, you can come back within a day or two. Yeah, yeah. As long as you can test negative, I yes, think yes. you don't have to wait ten days. Exactly. So I, I just because you're punishing the vaccinated along with the unvaccinated, right? Exactly. And that wasn't the, that wasn't the cause. And so I think I read something to the effect that uh, three key players for the Rams for tonight's game uh-huh. uh, can are off COVID because they were able they were vaccinated and. Uh, they can get him. Higby get being him back. one. Higby yeah. being one. Right. Uh, I forgot the other two guys. Uh, Jalen Ramsey is he already? Done? I think it was Ramsey, yeah. and there was one one other one other guy. So anyway, yeah, that's starting to take place. So that's that's the game. Uh, one of the games at seven. So it's the Rams in Seattle, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then Philadelphia, Washington, uh, in Philadelphia. So uh, that that'll be uh, more games to watch uh, this week and. Um, as we continue here on uh, mix shots, yeah, that's your show. Mix shots, shots yeah, right? It's your yeah. show. It's your show. Don't forget. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I could change the name if you want. We, we mean, can go, we can call it Emerson. Good for my ego, Emerson yeah. and Company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we'll return and we'll we'll talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, Pro Bowl voting going Excellent. on here on mix shots. 
Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero guacamole. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly... Just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. We're teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back, back, to back. mixed shots. Your favorite WWE superstars return to AT&T Stadium for WrestleMania on Saturday, April 2nd and Sunday, April 3rd, 2021. For a limited time, get four tickets for the price of three and save up to 25% when you see code C-H-E-E-R. For some reason, it's uppercase. I would imagine that's why you have to put it in. (laughs) Get your tickets to the most stupendous two-night WrestleMania in history. Visit SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Very nice. You like wrestling, brother? Uh... I'm not a well WrestleMania. WrestleMania. There's a difference. There's yeah. a difference between wrestling. wrestling. And, yeah, real wrestling and WrestleMania. You were wrestling. I wrestled. 112 <laughs> pounds. Can you imagine that. seeing that? Yeah, I can see you flying right out of the ring too. They would throw you right out. No, because they the were ring. my size. They couldn't do it. <laughs> they weren't big enough. That was. Uh, I learned out about uh, sports then. It's like you know, size does matter. Yeah, these guys not well. I don't want to get anybody upset, but that's you know, right. This is WrestleMania, so that's right. Be ready to be entertained. So we're going to be entertained at some point here on uh, Wednesday when they release the official Pro Bowl uh, rosters. Mm-hmm. But they decided that since there were games on Monday night, that they started releasing names, uh, especially uh, on billboards in Vegas because the Pro Bowl is going to be in well, Vegas. Yeah, you should. So you they're should. they're getting guys out. So no shocks here that Tom Brady uh, is going to be in the Pro Bowl for mm-hmm. the fifteenth time. Uh, Aaron Doddle for his eighth. Uh, Cooper Cup, first time. The Rams uh, wide Aaron receiver. Aaron Donald for eight already? Eight for eight, I believe Golly. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, uh, running back from the Colts for his first time. Might be MVP. And Travis Kelsey for the seventh time, although he's got a clear COVID in time because yeah, he no. now is, is <laughs> out with COVID. I thought this was interesting. They also released the top five fan vote getters and that doesn't officially because that's one third of the voting process for pro bowl Mm -hmm. one third coaches one third players but the uh top five vote getters was taylor nick bosa nick bosa was second taylor had two thousand six hundred six hundred two hundred and sixty five thousand three hundred and seventy votes uh nick bosa was next then kelsey then Kyle Jerzyk, the fullback, the 49ers, is that right? Yeah. 
And fifth was Trayvon Diggs. Wow. With uh, 240,900,000 2, votes. <laughs> 242,900. Like I get it right. Uh, he was 23,000 short wait, 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 of first wait, wait, wait. place. These are the fans? Fans vote. voting the so top there's, five. So there are no QBs in there. Isn't that amazing? That's crazy. That is. I thought you were talking something. Yeah, there are no QBs. That's what in it there. said. The top five fan vote getters. That is extremely unusual. And that doesn't guarantee anybody a spot either. By the way, uh, other than, uh, well, we knew uh, Taylor and Kelsey uh, had made it, but yeah, Trayvon Diggs. So it's a pretty good uh, deal for you him. You know, I gotta say, I, I'm not a not a fan of the fans voting. Yeah. Because it just turns into a popular Well, and, and by the way, speaking of that, where's my list? The most fan votes coming from, because uh, I think when you do it, you have to, like, uh, admit which team you're, mm-hmm. you're voting from mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So the top five uh, fan voting teams were the Chiefs, the Cowboys, the 49ers, New England, and Green Bay. Shocking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good teams, good, yeah. good, good winning team. But yeah, to me, with the fans, it just just turns into a just a popularity contest. I'm not, and you can vote. I think there's a limit, but yeah, you can vote man. several times. It's just, that's too much for me. But the, even and and I have to be fair. Even when you go with the players, you know, then you know, like a guy like me, I'm from HBCU, uh, and no matter how well I play, you know, there are times when you have certain players. Uh, they're very discriminatory. It's, it's not, I wouldn't say discriminatory towards uh, small school players, but they will definitely favor Power Five players right. over small school players. No matter how well you play, they're just thinking, okay, well, I come from the Big Ten, then I'm going to go, I'm voting for the Big Ten DBs, and they're going to get more consideration from me. And so I, I think that's kind of their way of trying to even it out between players and fans. Uh, so when you played, you guys were the, the players were still voting. Just the players, yeah. just the players. Yeah, yeah. So to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but the players know the players they played against. Yes. But they don't know the rest of the league because you don't sit there and only watching you, on TV. Only all the if time, you're right? aware. Only if you're aware because even though you study for other players and other teams, right. You you've seen those teams play a particular player that you may not that have you may be against. scouting for. I might not play against Jerry Rice a particular year, right? But I know that Jerry Rice. I mean, I know right. that's Jerry's. Jerry's probably needs to get more votes than I wouldn't say Michael Irvin at that time. But that you know, when Jerry first came in, you know, Drew was gone, Tony Hill was on his way out. So I wouldn't pick one of my receivers that was backing up Drew Pearson. And say that okay, I'm going to consider him as much as Jerry Rice because I hadn't played mm-hmm. against Jerry Rice. So, you, you know, you know as a player who the good players are, and but we also know that there's favoritism amongst players as well. And I know that for a fact because I can't go to another a many HBCU brothers and go, <laughs> hey man, let's get a, get together and we're going to vote for each other. Get a well, block it's, vote going here. It's just a few here. of us, right? So we couldn't do that. So I do get why they did it, and I think they also included the uh, executives in it. Coach, they, coaches, the coaches. Just do coaches. It. So they get a third. And I, I think that's good. Because I, I think back I think then good. when you guys did it, it was coaches, players, exactly. and it was one block yes. of voting, yes. right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and, and as you, even as we got in and started talking about the different votes, you know, we kind of had to have a meeting about it. And I remember them having team meetings. I don't like that. Right? I didn't like that. Like, I don't need you to tell me who to vote for. Right. And so that kind of, I wasn't happy about that at all. But it's a fraternity. And with a fraternity, you've got the, the bigger fraternities and the smaller fraternities. And that's just the way it goes. So you're not going to get away from some type of favoritism. It's like AP voting in co- for college <laughs> thank rankings, you. right? Thank you. And then when we finish, we get to say, okay, who got left out <laughs> right. and who shouldn't have made it, right? Right, right. <laughs> After you've all come together. Right. You know, so now it's always going to be that. It's like it's like uh, the elections. Um, I think uh, there was a, a few more that were released. Uh, so Cleveland was playing last night, so yeah. they released some of their guys. Poor Cleveland. Miles Garrett, <laughs> Nick Chubb, Denzel Ward, Joel Betonio, and Wyatt Teller. And then from Minnesota, Delvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Harrison Smith, Justin and Jefferson Jakeem Grant Sr. Yeah, he only— I think he only caught like three passes last night, but his big play was he sucked three guys with him, right? 
to, to the end zone right. and the other receivers <laughs> wide, wide open. open. I'd run with him too. I mean, it, it's it's I can't. To me, you know, I've I've gone against players that are just dominating. Uh, one player, people ask me that all the time. Well, who's your favorite? Who's your, your toughest receiver? It's, Usually it's going to be somebody you played against twice. Right. And my, to me it was Roy Green. Yeah. You know, he was he was Steve Smith Sr. before Steve Smith Sr. But you played Joe Theismann twice. Yeah, okay. You didn't vote for him, I bet. <laughs> I didn't say I voted for Roy because I played him twice. I voted for Roy because he kicked my butt. Yeah. That's the difference. So how about the poor Bears last night? Did you watch that? I did, yeah. It was sad. I had to turn it off. I thought they were going to have to carry uh, Nagy off yeah, the field in yeah. a straight jacket. Mm -hmm. Well, he had some beef. Yes, he, he did. He did have some beef. I mean, to me, the biggest issue with the NFL right now is a referees. They are extremely inconsistent, and these are when you, these are the rules that you have laid out. You send out a memo about this particular rule, and you can't get it right. You can't stay consistent. And when he got his personal foul for arguing, <laughs> I, I I always remember this line. I used I, I would tell an official. I said. Don't make up for your mistake right. by throwing a flag on right, me, right, right? right? And that's what they did. That's what they he did. He was definitely right. And then you know what the the head official told the uh, pool reporter about his 15-yard penalty? He used inappropriate language. Yeah, of course he did. Well, you, you hadn't heard it before? Yeah, it's the NFL. <laughs> you hadn't heard it before? You're a grown man. Jeez. He was offended. Language. So so th this is a good one because, you know, back in the day, you know, when we somebody would cuss, right, you'd put like four little dot, 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 dot or whatever. <laughs> and then growing up, you were sitting there going, okay, which of my cuss words do I know that would fit in <laughs> right, to that? Right. Right. So well, they I give was, you like the first letter. Yeah, and, and the, the last <laughs> one. Yeah, then you got to fill in. I can remember 12 years old and which word have I heard that fits into there? Well, I was thinking last night, okay, what could you say that was so inappropriate that he threw a flag on you, right? What do you think? I can't say, oh, yes, but there can. was a couple that I came up well, with. Well, it would have to be members of your family that were addressed. Yes. So it had to be something about his mother, <sighs> right? You know. It, well, there was the other game. I saw, which <laughs> game was it? That somebody was it Harbaugh or uh, I can't remember. But it, there was like four f bombs in a row, right? And 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 no flag. It, but last the, night not, he gets a flag. Again, it's not the f bombs. They, yeah, they must have attacked okay someone that, in right. his lineage. He had, <laughs> there was a family member was was insulted, and they probably felt it through him. Unbelievable. So, yeah, yeah. Whatever he said, boy. He better not say that again. And then I just felt sorry for Nagy because it didn't matter how good their defense was playing, um, the, the quarterback's not ready to play in the Well, NFL. let's let's think about this. And he, it's not his fault, right? He was coach of the year? Yeah. Two years ago? Three I, years I ago? I believe so, yeah. Got him in the playoffs. Yeah, how quickly does it change? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, at some point in that game, I would have just said, all right, we just need to score a touchdown. <laughs> right. I'm putting Andy Dalton in. I, I'm not going to hurt the kids' feelings, but my God, we've been in the red zone five times and we hadn't scored yet. And and let's let's I mean let's face it, some of the guys, a couple of guys are wide open. Yeah, and he just he was just too excited. Right. He was too excited. It wasn't that he can't make that play. He was too excited at that time to make a couple of them. And they were both in corners of the end zone. So, so uh, Robert Quinn after the game. About the officiating, he said, I think they need to check the refs they hire <laughs> and not our coaches. <laughs> I agree. I agree. There's something going on with the understanding. The perception of a rule varies too much from referee right. to referee. Right. And these are these are points of nuance to where, you know, it may it, they, they they put too much into that little part of whatever happened. Sometimes you just got to stick to the basics. You know, the foundation of whatever that, that rule was, was built on, stick to that. Don't try to get cute. You know what I mean? Just because something might be a little bit out of, out of, out of whack in regards to not being in that, 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 same, what am I, that same lane. Right. You know, in regards to, 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 to making the call. Well, how about, well, the one, the, the, the killer one that Nagy went crazy on was when 
the quarterback was running out of the pocket and their safety dove to try to make the tackle on him and there was a blocker coming and they acted like he cut the blocker. Right, right. He wasn't trying to cut the blocker. That's not what the rule was there for. He was trying to – and he made the tackle, by the way. What about the – I uh, thought they were going to call him going low on a quarterback, <laughs> right? Okay. And I'm going, well, no, he's not a quarterback. He's a runner now, right? right? Well, what, what about the the, uh, the, the the DB? Number 26 had a tough night last night. Night. Yes, he did. Oh, my goodness. They called him on the head-to-head when he clearly made a play on the ball as he converged on the receiver. Oh, that, oh no, that's the one he went crazy yes. on. Because he yes. didn't really he, – he went for the ball and he collided with him yeah. and they, they were like it, it was a, a dangerous hit. No, well, no, it wasn't. It was, a not, da- it was not. That's was the one he got mad And he made a play on the and ball. And it's like every one of those were against him. I thought the people in Chicago were going to come out <laughs> of the stands. Riot. Right. Who's going to have a riot? Hey, Chicago can do that now. Don't say it. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what. Growing up in Grant Park uh, one night, uh, it was a weekend, Sly and the Family Stone was supposed yes. to play a free concert. They did not show up. Oh, that was Sly. And they had thousands of people out there, right? And they, that was Sylvester for you. It, Sylvester, they, he did that. <laughs> he did that in Dallas too. Did he? Yes. Come on, that was number. He was, he was not unique in that. And that was in the seventies, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was, the seventies. Come on. And man. it might have been you late sixties. Yeah. Oh well, if it was late sixties, then we know what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the place just went crazy, and it's like, oh my god. So the backup band just had to come back out again. Yeah. I don't even know if they. Had, <laughs> uh, hopefully, they had a backup a band. band. <laughs> right. And by the way, I need to correct myself. I said thirty-seven players on Monday. Forty-seven players tested positive on. Monday. So when we come back here on Mix Shots, uh, we're going to go over uh, the teams that are kind of in that NFC uh, conference race with mm-hmm. the Cowboys that are now number two seed uh, going into the next week of games. And we'll see what happens with uh, the Rams uh, tonight so and then good. Philadelphia and Washington. But uh, who do these teams have left to play that are in contention mm-hmm. for that number one seed that next on Mix Shots? The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like, where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back, 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 to mixed shots. Want Rowdy to deliver your presents this year? Yes. <laughs> now is your chance. Rowdy's holiday deliveries are available. Spread joy this holiday season with a surprise delivery from your favorite mascot. Book your holiday delivery today at DallasCowboys.com slash Rowdy. I like the, the title. Rowdy delivers. 
and we'll find out how much longer he's going to be delivering with Christmas right around That's the corner. That's it. After Christmas, ain't no more deliveries. Did you do all your shopping? No. No, I have not. Do you still have to do it or just going to put it off? I'll put it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what? what? Dude, so people... if you don't get your present on the 25th, well, you might get I it have on grown 27th, kids, I right? have grown kids. And, and I have grown people. Yeah, so they don't worry about that's that. That's like somebody was apologizing to me for a belated like birthday greeting. And I said, that's all right. You know, it was a week later, I could stretch it out. Cash still rules. <laughs> yeah, right. Just give them cash, <laughs> and they can go get what the heck Absolutely. they want. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so uh, as we go on here, I looked up uh, the games the rest of these teams in contention have to play. Green Bay, they still have Cleveland, Minnesota, and Detroit. So... Who knows where Cleveland's going to be with uh, their COVID problems that they had going into the game last mm-hmm, night. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the next game that the Packers have to play. Uh, Tampa Bay. How about this? Carolina, the Jets, Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, they need it. They deserve it. They deserve it. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Come on. They've been having a problem. They have been having problems. And then Arizona. They don't. Have, they have probably the hardest path: the Colts, Cowboys, and Seattle. Mm. And Ooh. Seattle's still playing, right? They, they, uh, even though they're five and eight, you know, if they win tonight, they're six and eight, and they're probably one game, yeah, one game or so away every, from that last seed. Everything's becoming extremely crowded. And then Minnesota, no, the Rams. Yeah. Oh my, Minnesota. Baltimore and the 49ers. Mm. So that last game against the 49ers might decide, uh, depending on what happens tonight, right? Right, right. Because if the 49ers win tonight, they're 9-6. and six. Where is the game being played today between the Cardinals and the Rams? Because uh, that, that uh, to me, that's At the always... Rams. Seattle's at the Rams. Oh, you mean that Cardinals. game. Oh, I, I, I didn't uh, Tonight, right? Tonight. It's tonight, isn't it? No, it's the 49ers... No, Seattle at the Rams tonight. Tonight. Got yeah. you. No Cardinals. Sorry. I didn't Sorry. Write. Sorry. Cardinals yeah. got beat by Detroit. Yeah, that that just Yeah, that's yeah, all that's that all, all you gotta, gotta say. say on that one. Yeah. So that's that's what those teams are facing. Favor with everyone. And the and the Cowboys have Washington, Arizona, and Philly. Which, you know I think the Cowboys well, the Bucks. Actually, the the Cowboys, because they're playing Arizona, have the toughest schedule. Their, their uh, three final opponents are at 500. Cowboys don't play in Arizona? No, they play Arizona. I thought you said in. Okay, no, sorry. No, no. Yeah, they play Arizona. Mm-hmm. So, um, we, we, could, we surely control our own destiny but all, but, uh, for yeah. the number two seed, I think, for the number two seed. Right. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess the Bucks could. As yeah. long as they don't tie the Bucks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, if— <laughs> Talk, Chris. Well, if Arizona loses again, you do tie the Bucks. Yeah, you would. So that you flip. So you but, need, you need somebody to. But beat obviously, Tampa the, Bay. The Rams will come up. Yeah. So yeah, the Rams or the 49ers, mm-hmm. one of the two, are going to end up being there. Uh, oh, this note I wanted to throw out. I think we touched. I can't remember if we touched on it yesterday or not. So Philadelphia tonight. It's uh, it was 39 degrees today, so probably by the time the sun goes down, it'll be in the low 30s. Mm. And Washington's taking a page from <laughs> the Cowboys. Uh-huh. They're bringing their benches to Philadelphia because they don't want to be cold. Okay, so what, what's going on with the benches, man? I mean, I don't understand the story with the benches. Why why is everybody bringing their own benches? Do they not trust the, the, the visiting the, yes, team? Yes, they don't. What, what is happening? Why, yes. why all of a sudden? Are Which they is not funny being... because Washington's <laughs> the one that started it. Yes. Right? So Philadelphia. You know, and it's like, okay, we're bringing our own benches. This so, you is know what? 2021. Are we going back to the same old it's like tricks a, back in the 70s it's and like 80s? An ad, it's like an advertisement because the bench, they got there's three benches on each side of the, the middle part where yeah. all the, con, the the communication stuff is. Mm-hmm. And each one of them has Washington, it, almost the length of the bench. <laughs> and then it says underneath in smaller type, football, team, and then it's established 1932. 
which which Chris Beam uh, outed them, right? He disputes big time because they were with, the Boston, with factual evidence. Boston Braves, the they start were the with. Boston Braves, yeah, in '32. So anyway, yeah, they're they're going to have their own branches at Philadelphia. And I, I, I just have a side note, and is the the quietest successful season in the NFL. Who do you think is having the quietest, most successful season? In the NFL, right? Especially considering how they started off. I, I know it's got nothing to do with the Cowboys at all. Just that's a hint for you. The quietest season of all. Su- quietest successful season. One player and the team itself, because as he goes, the team seems to. Indianapolis? Go. Nope. The freaking Dolphins. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> the Dolphins are, what, seven straight? They're seven and seven. Yeah, they won seven straight, and and Tua is is balling out during those seven games. They had counted him out at the beginning of the season. They couldn't win with him or without him. As soon as he comes back, I think I don't know what the injury was. I can't remember the game, but they came back th- under his his leadership, and from then on, they have not looked back. So in the AFC, which mm-hmm. we didn't talk about. Uh, the teams that aren't leading the division, Buffalo's eight and six. They're mm-hmm. a game behind New England. Indianapolis is eight and six. They're a game behind Tennessee. Cincinnati and Baltimore are both eight and six. Kansas City's ten and four. The Chargers are eight and six. And then there's one, two, three, four, four teams at seven and seven. And Miami's one of them. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's a great job. I don't even know who the head coach is down there. Obviously, you don't either. <laughs> oh, it's um, – I was the former um, former Miami uh, – no, former New England defensive coach. Oh. See, if Bill was here, he'd have looked at I know. All you have to do is – But go- that lets Google you know – right? That lets you know – if you just leave people alone sometimes, you know, just let them be. You haven't had a whole bunch of commentary about the Dolphins. I, I've been listening to Sports Talk Radio all season long, especially during the second half of this season. They have not mentioned the Dolphins not once. And they have been, they won seven straight. I'm sorry, that, that deserves some type of recognition. I was you got gonna, it? I was going to look it up and see if I could find it real fast. Um. I can't. I guess I could type it, but I'm just being lazy. Dang it. I'm surprised Chris doesn't have it. He's probably on. Bill's over there yelling. He's on break Bill's, right now. Bill's probably at his house yelling. Uh, we can end the show with not, this. Not really great radio here right no, now. No, that's okay. It? They don't listen. No I, one's listening. I, I got, I got the, the whole thing on the Miami Dolphins. and they Why haven't, don't you just say Dolphins head coach? They haven't. I did, and it didn't come up. Why not? I don't know why. The Dolphins head coach 2021. Let's just Brian do it. Brian Flores. Yeah, that's it. Come on, dude. Uh, you, Flores. I had to do this for you. D- you were faster than that. It was my story, so I guess I yeah, should have had that That's right. Before you asked. Brian Flores. But before you Coach of the, the year. <laughs> You're going with it, huh? I'm going. <laughs> I'm a, oh, and he's a brother, too. Yeah. yeah Boston yeah, College. Absolutely. Yes, Brian Flores. No, but that's why nobody giving him love. He's a brother. I'm with you, man. I Al, got you, bro. You know what? He was getting fired the whole he year. He sure was. Right? right? Now he's, he's won seven straight. Right. Wow, what if they make the playoffs? So last last point here we're going to make uh, before we uh, go on is, uh, you know, that bet that uh, Dak Prescott and Marcus Lawrence got going? Turnovers versus touchdowns. Turnovers versus touchdowns. That's right. And uh, yesterday uh, Dan Quinn was asked about it, and he goes, I love it. He goes, anything that creates competition on your own team. And he goes, and that just shows you what kind of character we have on this team. I was born too soon. They would come up with that, right? I was born too soon. Because you would have came up with that, right? I would have loved this. I would have loved this. Absolutely. Yeah. This has been good stuff. Um, So um, I was going to tell you a story about coming around too soon. And I can't remember the whole part of it. Mm -hmm. But – we all came around too soon. Yes, we did. Right? I, I, it, th- these are the kind of guys that, especially when you're talking about, you know, union business and players not being afraid of management and understanding the importance of, uh, you know, 
being 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 part of a team. Right. And and we didn't have that back when I was a union rep. I was a horrible union rep. <laughs> I was horrible. <laughs> Every everyone on the team crossed over. I was out on the picket line by myself. So we'll we'll end with this. So I remember the story. So Greg Ellis had signed like a. I don't know. He got bad advice. He signed like a seven-year deal. I remember that. Right? And then like a year or two later was when all the the <laughs> signing bonus escalated, escalated, right? And he was unhappy with his contract. And he was still one of the better players and, on the team. And he was. And so we were at our little uh, old-timers, writers, media little lunch. And Pat Summerall was asking us, well, what's wrong with Greg? Why, you know, what, you know, and I said, well, I said, you know, he signed that contract too soon. He, I said he just kind of came around too soon before the contracts really exploded. And Summerall in his imminent <laughs> voice goes, we all yeah, came around I too soon. <laughs> I can hear Summerall. Yeah, the old man. Like, right. I'm with you, old man. Like, sure. like all these announcers now are making all this money. <laughs> right. I'm retired, and I didn't make even close they to that. They are close to as good as he was. Right, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And with that, that's Mick yes. Shots here on Tuesday for Everson. I'm Mickey, and we'll be back tomorrow, and we'll have with Bill, Bill with us Thank God. on Mick Shots. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!